Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to our presentation. My name is Polly Wong, and this is my fellow presenter, Caleb Jane. And we both study in the Department of Logistic and Maritime Studies. I hope you find this topic informative and interesting. The topic of our presentation this morning is how to plan and deliver an effective oral presentation. As we know, oral presentation plays an important role of our study at university. In many of the modules that we take, our tutor often asks us to carry out research and then write up a paper or report on a particular aspect of the topic. So clearly, knowing how to give good effective presentation is absolutely vital for all of us. But how often do you see a really good presentation? It's true, many of us have a good understanding of our subjects, and many of us have a good command of English, and many of us have the ability to put across our ideas to an audience. But by no means, all of us have the ability to put all these ingredients together and deliver really effective top-class presentations. Why is this? Well, the simple fact is that oral presentations are hard to do, hard to plan, hard to organize, hard to deliver. Not only have we got to master the subject matter, which can often be very complex, but we've also got to communicate our ideas in a second language. While at the same time, worrying about our visual aids, timing, body language, and of course our grain, face the tutor. Now, although many of these problems will never entirely disappear, with carefully preparation, planning, and practice, you'll be able to develop the strategy you need in order to deliver good, effective oral presentations, both here at the PolyU and in your future career. And this is the main theme of our presentation this morning how to give an effective oral presentation. I'd like to divide this presentation, which will last around 15 minutes, into three main parts. To start with, I'm going to look at how to plan your presentation. Then I will move on to talk about the ways in which you can organize and write up your ideas and information. After that, Caleb will give you some suggestions about how to communicate your message and conclude the presentation. And at the end, there will be a short Q&A session. So planning the presentation, organizing the presentation, delivering the presentations. I'd like to start by looking at how to plan your presentation. And here, I'd like to mention three points your purpose, your audience, and the setting for the preparation. Before I begin, I should point out that when people advise students about planning presentations, they usually include suggestions about how to select and narrow down a topic. Now, while this is of course important, for the purposes of this presentation today, I'm going to assume that this has already be decided, either by you or your tutor. So I will assume that you've chosen a topic, carry out the research, and now you're ready to begin the process of planning a presentation. Okay, the first thing that you have to consider in the planning process is the purpose of your presentation. There are two ways in looking at the purpose. The first is the general purpose of the presentation. In other words, do you want to inform, entertain, persuade, and so on? I guess the general purpose of our presentation is to inform or enlighten. As well as thinking about the general purpose of your presentation, you need to think about its specific purpose. And by this, I mean what you want to accomplish what you want to achieve. Essentially, this involves asking why. 
Why am I giving this presentation? Well, the specific purpose of this presentation is to give you some practical advice and suggestions about planning, organizing, and delivering effective oral presentation at university. That's what we are trying to accomplish. The second aspect of planning involves thinking about the needs and interests of your audience and the context in which your presentation is taking place. Look at this quote from Stephen Lucas from his book in 2008. In other words, if you want to connect with your audience, you need to understand who they are. These are some of the things you need to consider. Their knowledge, the level of interest, their attitude, their needs, as well as characteristics like age, sex, and ethnic group. Apart from thinking about your audience, you also need to consider the context or setting in which the presentation is taking place. These are just a few questions you need to ask yourself. How many people will be coming? Where is the presentation taking place? What are the seating arrangements? What facilities are available? Clearly, giving a long assess the presentation to 50 professionals in a large, well-equipped lecture theater will be quite different from giving a short talk to a, a small group of classmates in a small seminar room. What you have to do when planning your presentation is think carefully about the kind of people that you are going to talk to and the kind of setting in which it's going to take place. And then adapt, tailor, customize your presentation so that it is appropriate for the audience and the occasion. Now, when you consider the organization of your presentation, I think it's best to start with the body. As Jeremy Comfort explained in his book, Evative Presentations, if the body is clear and logically organized, your presentation will be easier for the audience to understand and remember. I think the best way to organize the body is to devise three or four main points, which of course are related to the purpose and central message of your presentation. And then select supporting points to develop your main points. As an example, let's look at how I've organized the body of this presentation. As you can see on the slide, the body has three main sections. Planning the presentation, organizing the presentation, and delivering the presentation. And each of these sessions has a number of supporting points. For example, this session on organizing presentation has five supporting points. Developing the body, introductions, conclusions, written and spoken English, outlining. Now, when you're actually delivering your presentation, it's important to supply transitions to help your audience follow your presentation as you move from one point to another. For example, I'm now coming to the end of my session on the body. So I need to say something to link this session with the next. So I would say, well, I think that's covered most of the points about organizing the body. So I'd like to move on to look at how you can introduce your presentation. Okay, we've looked at how to plan presentations, and we've seen that designing on a presentation purpose is important, that we also should consider our audience and their needs, and the context or setting of the talk. And finally, I look briefly at the organization. I'd like to invite Caleb to tell us about delivering your presentation. Caleb, over to you. Thank you, Polly. I'm going to focus on delivering the presentation. First, I will give you some suggestions about how to introduce and conclude your presentation. And then, I will look at the differences between written and spoken English. 
and the ways that you can use your awareness of these differences to prepare notes for your presentation. Finally, I will look at using whistle aids, body language, and the Q&A session. Now, whether we like it or not, the fact is that the first impression count and this very much applies to presentation. What you say, how you say it, how you look, this all contributes to the impression you make at the beginning of your presentation. Making a good impression is clearly an important factor in giving a successful presentation. So, how should you do this? Well, a study by Jern in 2008 shows that there are two basic <coughs> ingredients first gain the attention and interest of the audience. And you can do this by doing things like asking a question, using a quotation, describing a problem, referring to a reason you went, using a whistle eggs, relating to the topic that your audience needs. In fact, that's what Polly did at the beginning of this presentation. The other thing that you need to do is to orient your listener to the presentation, to do this. You need to identify the topic and purpose of your presentation, giving a relevant background material, and provide an overview of main points you are going to talk about. If you do this, your audience will be prepared both internationally and psychologically for your presentation. I said a moment ago that first impression count, well, it's also true that the last impression count so you should aim at leaving your audience with a lasting impression of both you and your message by making your conclusion brief, clear, and memorable. Easier said than done, perhaps. But here are three suggestions. First, try to signal your audience, either verbally or non-verbally, that you are coming to the end of the presentation. Second, Summarize the main idea of the presentation. Third, try to reinforce the central message of your presentation. Okay, you've organized the body of your presentation and you've worked out all your introduction and your conclusion. You know what you are going to say and what is the order in which you are going to say it. But how are you going to say it? What about the words you are going to use? Well, I think it's fair to say that a lot of speakers don't really pay attention to the language they use, or rather to the type of language they use. They just um, tend to read out and report and paper, and um, to recite it from memory. The problem is that written English is quite different from spoken English. When we speak, we tend to use simple, straightforward words and uh, short sentences or sentence fragments. We tend to use personal pronouns and contraction and ask a lot of questions. We also tend to repeat things. Information isn't packed so densely. So if you read straight from a script, um, you will increase lots of features of written academic language. Compress sentences, passive voice, long words, and so on. To see what I mean, all you have to do is listen to someone's reading from a textbook or journal. After about 30 seconds, you'll be confused or bored or asleep. Written language is hard to understand, hard to process, and you need to be aware of this when you are preparing the notes for your presentation. And this is what I would like to talk about next. Now, I've just mentioned that it's not a good idea to read out your report or paper, even if you are very good at writing natural spoken English. It will be still really difficult to memorize all the material. On the other hand, you can't just speak off the, or the top of the head. You've got to have something to refer to. I think the best solution to this problem is to prepare a um, <clears throat> detailed outline or plan or, of the whole presentation. This would include all the main sections and subsections and would serve 
as a kind of blueprint for your presentation. This then forms the basis of your PowerPoint. And we will remind you of the main points you want to make during the presentation. OK, so far we have concentrated on how to plan and organize your presentation. In other words, what you should do before you actually give your presentation, what I'm going to talk about next, and this is the main, last main point, is how can you can deliver your presentation effectively. And by this, I mean the things you need to consider during the presentation. I would like to concentrate on three aspects of delivery. First, visual X. Second, nonverbal communication. And third, the question and answer section at the end of the presentation. It goes without saying that um, using visual X like charts, photos, and computer graphics can help you to get your message across. They can make your presentation interesting and memorable. But you need to ensure that you use your visual aids effectively. Here are a few basic tips. Make sure that your visual aids actually supports what you are saying. Make sure that they are simple and clear. Make sure that everyone can see them. And make sure that you explain it clearly and fully. The second thing to consider when delivering your presentation is nonverbal communication. Barbara and Alan Pease wrote an excellent book about this, details of which are on this final slide. He writes about nonverbal communication as meaning communicating without words. In your presentation, you will communicate your message through spoken and written language and body language. You need to ensure that your personal appearance, your facial expression, your eye contact, your posture, your movement, your gesture, all gave the audience the impression that you are enthusiastic, confident, and professional. That you really want to communicate with them. That you really want to build a rapport with them. The last point I would like to talk about is the Q&A session at the end of all your presentation. The Q&A session gives the audience uh, the chance to find out more about the topic and in some cases ask for clarification about what you have been saying, how well you deal with the question, and the attitude you show towards your questioners will influence the way people feel about you and our presentation as a whole. I think there are two main points to consider here. The first is to anticipate the kinds of questions that might be asked and then prepare the possible answers. This is particularly important if you are pres uh, presenting a final year project where the subject lecturers often like to test students out with difficult questions like, um, what you can do in this situation is to think about possible weaknesses or limitations of your project. Don't worry. All projects have weaknesses and um, limitations. And then try to think of ways that you can counter this criticism. But make sure that this is in a fair and open way. This is the second point I would like to make. Don't be too of a defensive if people challenge you, so that you welcome questions, uh, make eye contact with the questioners, so that you value their questions, and try to answer them the best to the best of your ability. If you disagree with someone, do so in a respectful and reasonable way. Don't ever insult the questioners by implying that his or her question is um, meaningless or irrelevant or stupid. Well, I think that covers most of the things that we want to say about how to give effective oral presentation. In our presentation, we focus the three main areas, planning your presentation, organizing your presentation, 
and delivering your presentation. To conclude, I would like to sum up the points we've made in a way that I would hope you will find easy to remember. And these are the key points that you need to consider during the presentation process. These are the principles of the presentation. Purpose. What is the objective of your presentation? People. Who will you be talking to? Preparation. What kinds of information and ideas will you include? Planning. How will you plan your material? And finally, performance. How can you communicate your ideas effectively? These are the principles of presentation. These are the principles that each and every one of you will need to consider if you want to give effective and oral presentation here at PolyU. Thank you. That's the end of our presentation. You can see our full reference list on our final slide. And now we will be very happy to answer any question you have. Are there any questions? Any questions? Uh, yes. How do you think we should deal with nervousness when we are presenting? Um, good questions. I think we can assume that in the early stage, we feel most nervous. It's best to be ready for this. If you've done your preparation well, I think it's just a question of rehearsing before the presentation. Might be with a friend who can give you some feedback. Um, is that okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. Would anyone else like to raise a question? I was wondering what we can do if we get a hard question or a question we can't answer. Right. Um, important point. First, give yourself a little time to think by saying, for example, yes, an interesting question, or, or just, I don't think um, there's any easy answers. You need some time to think. But if you have information somewhere you can say, I don't have the details at, right, at hand right now, but if you leave me a contact address, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, yes, I think so. And sometimes you could try in general terms to answer the questions, um, but say you need to find uh, fuller details later. Uh, have we answered your questions? That's fine, yes. Thanks. <laughs>